Hi there, my name's Sophie Howard and for the last six years I've been figuring out how to run an online business alongside juggling family life. So I look after my two children on my own most of the time and um, what I've figured out is just the value of routine. So I've talked before about my morning routine and in the evening it's very different. The morning's all about go, 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 sort of getting everyone out the door and moving. And then the end of the evening's the wind down, everyone getting ready for sleep. Um, finishing all the jobs for the day. So um, what I found that works really well for me because I do sometimes struggle to get to sleep and if I don't do things in the right sort of way throughout the evening, I'll find myself wide awake still at two in the morning and that's not a good setup for the following day. Um, so there's a few things I do. One is I've um, just, we finish eating quite early and put everything away from that's sort of food related. And then I say to the children, the kitchen is closed. So, you know, from whatever time, say seven o'clock, there's no late night snacks, there's no hot drinks. Like they just have to eat at meal times and stop this incessant snacking that they all seem to want to do. So that's one thing that's really helps. Just finish the meal, eat a big meal and we're done. <laughs> and then the next thing is doing homework and reading. So usually my eldest son's quite, diligent and he gets down and sits down and does his homework straight away he's easy super easy and he enjoys doing it but my daughter puts up a bit of a fight so I usually have to sit with her and coerce her into kind of getting started then she's usually okay once we've got started so getting homework done is part of the evening I, I find it hard to sit down straight after school and do that with them they're not ready to concentrate again and then we go to the library at least once a week and get a big stack of good books and because there's about a two-year age gap they often enjoy the same books so we read a couple of books together that I read to them. And then I do a bit of a sweep around the house, just you know picking things up that are in the wrong room. And then that just restores some of the order. But honestly, if you saw my house, uh, this is no domestic goddess running <laughs> uh, you know, a Marie Kondo, uh, you know, perfect, uh, beautifully, spotlessly clean place. You know, there's a bit of chaos, but um, at least the right things are generally in the right room and the surfaces are mostly clear. That keeps me kind of sane. And I put the washing machine on, the dishwasher on, get all that stuff that needs washing turned around. And then um, once the children are in bed, uh, which some nights is easier than others, and especially here in New Zealand in the summer, so we're in January now, and it's still light at 10 o'clock at night. So these, you know, six-year-old children are leaping around, not at all sleepy. They've been at the beach, um, you know, they've been playing all day. They just can't find their off switch to go to sleep because it's still broad daylight outside and they're having fun. So I found that really hard. So one thing we've done is after dinner, we've walked down to the beach. So you can see behind me, we've got Lake Wanaka and my house is a sort of a block away. So we walk down to the scout den along the lake front and back up. And that's sort of a half hour loop or so by the time they've thrown some stones and found some sticks to whack each other with. And uh, that kind of takes that sort of, you know, there's no screen time. It's just like a calming walk. I leave my phone behind and we just go for a walk and a paddle and do that little loop. And that seems to calm them down a bit and just tie them out a bit more. Get the kids to bed. And then once the children are in bed, so say that's eight o'clock on a good night, although last night was a shocker. Um, then I usually have some reading to do or I'll go and just water plants in the garden. Like I just need to keep moving for a little bit. I can't sit down and work at that time of night. Um, so I usually will either be reading or just doing some, some jobs around the house. And then um, I go to bed quite early, sort of half 10, 11. I'm usually asleep by the time the kids wake me up at half five. Uh, it's an early start, so I need to get to bed relatively early. So I kind of uh, used to read in bed, but now I try and read in a different room and bed, I just go to sleep and that's been great. And I'm actually doing a dry January, so I've just done a month of no alcohol at all trying to see if that helps me sleep better. My conclusion is absolutely zero difference. <laughs> Probably saved me quite a lot of money and fine New Zealand wines, but um, yeah, I don't, I've tried sort of, don't drink a lot normally, but tried going to absolutely zero, it makes no difference at all. So quite nice to have a glass of wine once the children are in bed. Um, and yeah, that's sort of the routine. I think if I've left on my work desk, my to-do list for the morning, so really clear what the priorities are for when I sit down to start work in the morning, that works really well. If I open my laptop and I'm hit by 500 emails and haven't kind of got a game plan, I'm just reacting to all the stuff that hits me. Whereas if I end the day by going, right, well, in the morning, the first thing I'll do is talk to this person. The second thing is I'll make a decision on that. The third thing is these five boring admin tasks, but they just have to be done. Need to do something with an accountant or, um, you know, place some product orders and do shipments. 
um, I'll, I'll line that up and I'm usually pretty good at guessing what I'll get done in a day. I'll know what time I'm going to exercise. So I just plan my day out for the next day before I go to bed and then I wake up not going around in circles or spinning about how to get started and I sleep better when I know I'm going to start productively. So that's how I end my days and um, it seems to be working really well. And um, the nights where I don't sleep well, it's generally I just haven't had enough exercise or I've got some open loop about something that I need to just sort out before I go to bed. So the less open loops, the better. And, uh, and then I should have a good sleep and start the next day on form. So um, I always share lots of stuff around kind of how I run, not just the technical bits of my online businesses, but all the other things I do around the, you know, with family or at home or juggling the resources and tools I use in my business. Because I think that makes a really big difference to the success people have if they're set up with the right sort of structure and support to run their businesses. So I share a lot of this in my training. If you're interested in learning about the kind of businesses I've been running online from home, um, then you can jump onto the webinar, which is a link for, or download my ebook, and then you'll be able to uh, follow what I've been up to. And if it appeals to you, then there's more training that you could get into to see if starting your own online business is the right thing for you. So if it is, that's great. And if not, I think you'll still really enjoy the book and the free training. So make sure you get hold of that and we'll see you in there.